you waiting, huh? I've always heard that the best things come in threes, so it is my absolute pleasure to welcome you to an extremely blast Battlefield 2042 vehicle tier list. If you need a quick recap on how these tier lists work, go check out my previous videos. Now, this is a threat. I don't want to waste anyone's time here, so without further ado, let's jump right into the first entry. For simplicity's sake, I'll be combining all of the lower tier vehicles into one group, so we can get to the juicy bits. The first vehicle in this group is a Lat V4 Recon, followed by the EBAA Wildcat, next by the MAV, the EMK V90 Tor, the Cav Brawler, the LCAA Hovercraft, the MD540 Nightbird, the M5C Bolt, the EBLC Ram, the Yov2 Pondhog, the AH64G X Apache Warchief, the MD38 Condor, the F35E Panther, the M185, the RAH68 Huron, the KA520 Super Hulkin, the MIT47 Pelly, the SU57 Pelly, the T28. And last, but certainly not least, the YG99 Hannibal. Huh. That looks like every single vehicle. Surely there must be some mistake. Let me see here. Ah, uh, there it is. Just a slight technicality. You see, on the vehicle page, it only lists the 20 vehicles you can either spawn or call in, which obviously are all garbage. However, if you go edit your player card and click on Vehicle Mastery, you'll see the other 5 much more important vehicles. While the Tuk Tuk, 4x4 Utility, Polaris, and Polaris Sportsman are all wonderful means of transportation, the star of the show is, without a doubt, the Ranger. <laughs> Yes, you heard me right. My favorite vehicle is the Ranger, and it's not even close. Let me ask you something. What does it take to use a vehicle? You have to drive it, right? Aim, position, shoot? That's too much thinking for my taste. You know what doesn't require a bunch of thinking? Yep, the Ranger. You don't have to reload it, you don't have to aim it, you don't even have to heal it. Unless you wanna. All you gotta do is call it in, and then boom, you have a cute little guy there to watch your back. There's a lot of useful and unexplored tips when it comes to using the Ranger, so I hope I can shed some light on these bits and bobs I've picked up throughout my many hours in this game. Oh, go ahead and make sure to do me a favor and ignore today's date. This is a very serious video and definitely not satirical at all. The first tip, which should be the most obvious, is how useful it is to have a second person, or in this case, AI, shooting at the same target. When the enemy is engaged, they have a split second decision on who to take out first. When it's you and another person, the decision is usually 50-50, but you won't always have someone else with you, and that's where the Ranger comes in. For some reason, when deciding whether or not to shoot a relatively inaccurate, high health machine or a squishy, precise human being, oftentimes people choose the machine. It's an interesting phenomenon that I like to dub, oh my gosh there's a scary robot dog and I need to kill it now. One of the most interesting strategies I've discovered with the Ranger is something that I'm still experimenting with and that can turn one of the worst operators in the game into one of the most fun. If you go Boris and drop the Ranger near your sentry, you can have up to three guns shooting at just one person, which is a lot. And then they have to choose who to shoot at out of three different targets, and once again, many times they decide to take out the machines rather than the people. Like I said, I'm still messing around with this idea, and it's very interesting, but it is an inherently defensive playstyle which really limits the ranger's capabilities, as one of the major upsides of that little pupper is his mobility. Speaking of, let's talk about it. The ranger is significantly faster than the average battlefield operator. It can sprint even quicker than the enhanced run and can quickly come to a halt and start laying down lead. They also have surprisingly good vertical capabilities, easily being able to scale over fences, through windows, and even some small one-story buildings. This is very useful if you call it in and run away, or are playing someone like McKay or Sundance that flit around the battlefield all the time, allowing the ranger to keep up with your high tempo. Although I just mentioned two assault operators, I feel the ranger's true synergy lies with either engineer or support. I already mentioned the triple Boris idea, but engineers are inherently good with the ranger as they can repair at any time, giving it more longevity in the long run. As for support, you can't always rely on your allies to cover you when you go in for a revive, but if you have this little guy watching your back, I found it usually takes the attention off of me and onto itself, letting me get my teammates back up and in the fight. On the topic of reviving, there's two important things I've noticed when it comes to being down while having a ranger. First, it stays up until you actually die die, so I always hold my revive for as long as I can, allowing someone to hopefully pick me up or my ranger to get a few extra kills. Second, I don't know if it's placebo or not, but I swear the ranger gets set to rage mode when you go down. I feel like I've gotten way more kills with it while I'm lying in the dirt than I have any other time. As for my evidence, well... My source is that I made it the f*** up! Realistically speaking, 9 times out of 10, your squad is never going to use the call-in feature. If they want a vehicle, they'll just spawn in one when they die, so you may as well use it for something that benefits not only yourself, but your whole team. Genuinely, when I'm playing all by my lonesome, there's no better feeling than holding one building all by yourself with the help of a man's best mechanical friend. So go on out there and call in some rangers. For me. Please. What are you still doing here? The video is over. Oh, alright, fine. Happy April Fools, you have officially been epically pranked. I saw all the comments on my last tier list, and I wanted to make it clear that while I definitely don't love vehicles, I understand that Battlefield would absolutely not be the same without them, and wouldn't get rid of them even if I could. 
I definitely prefer the Ranger to riding in or operating a vehicle, as it suits my playstyle much better, but I have nothing but respect for good vehicle players. They can be some of the most impressive and oppressive people on the map, and I know just how much time it takes to be that skilled as I am terrible with vehicles, which is one of the main reasons I don't like them too much. Yep, it all boils down to a skill issue, who could have guessed? In the end, it boils down to fairness. I hate spending minutes building up a good defense with my team, placing down reinforcements and reviving those that fall for it all to come crashing down in less than 5 seconds due to a tank sitting 3 miles away that no one can even rock it due to a trophy system, or a plane player with over 2000 hours in this game alone decimating us and maneuvering out of there with expert precision and impossible tracking. Every time a poor babby Boris dies and there's nothing I could do to save him, a part of my soul dies with him. It can feel unfair, but again, maybe I just need to get good, experiment with different operators, try out some new strategies. Wait, new strategies? Like what I was proposing throughout this whole video? Did I just bring this thing full circle? There was actually a point? Holy sh- I'm so smart. I mean, uh, one sec. Pull yourself together, Isaiah. You can do this. Don't let the people down. <clears throat> Thank you all so very much for watching. I took a bit of a break, obviously, but I'm hopefully gonna be uploading a bit more this year. But with my upload schedule, who knows? Regardless, if you enjoyed the video and decided to do all the fun interaction stuff, it would mean the world to me. Have a wonderful day, cuties, and I'll see you all next time. You can have all you want, don't you